The investigation tells for the first time the extraordinary story of a lost documentary made inside the IRA in 1972, the bloodiest, bloodiest year of the Troubles. The Secret Army was made by an American film crew who captured IRA leaders and rank and file, planning, preparing and carrying out bomb and gun attacks across Northern Ireland. But almost as soon as it was made, the film disappeared. The film crew, headed by writer and academic J. Boyer Bell, were essentially embedded with the IRA here. Some of the film's most totemic material was filmed in Derry. Dara McIntyre has this report, which begins with an excerpt from the original film. The children's war in Derry starts each afternoon when the school bell emits its final toll. As the young bogsiders assemble in William Street, trouble begins to brew. Derry, where Boyer Bell's team first filmed the IRA in action. In one scene, Martin McGuinness takes the film crew on a tour of free Derry, the area largely controlled by the IRA, where at the time, security forces were barricaded out. The no-go areas of Derry consist mainly of two areas, the Cragen and the Bog side. That's IRA member Tony Devine, riding up front in the car with Martin McGuinness, giving a running commentary. Every time we come around, we always check the barricades. Mark McGuinness died in 2017, but Tony Devine is still living in Derry. His IRA days long behind him. Well, 17 or 18. We're only just starting to discover gears, and then along comes this war. IRA members were filmed unmasked on the streets of Cregan, staging a gun attack at an army post and attempting to shoot down an army helicopter. Do you remember that day, Tony? I do, surely. I, what actually happened was 10 or 12 of the Cregan volunteers had set up a, an ambush behind these houses. They were shooting away at the, the helicopter. Finding the people who made this film 50 years ago was a struggle. Most have died. We did find the composer Boyer Bell hired to put a soundtrack to the documentary. I think the purpose of doing the film was trying to show the legitimate cause of the IRA. Today, 88-year-old Jacob Stern lives on the edge of Arizona's Sonoran Desert. I think it was Bo himself said, we're going to show you something that's never been seen before. The first filming of a car bomb at the IRA is ever set off. The crew filmed the IRA loading a bomb into a stolen car in the back streets of the city. Not all bombs go off as they're supposed to. So I was in a heightened state of alert <laughs> and worry. This scene is remarkable because it also features Martin McGuinness, overseeing the assembly of the car bomb. The top IRA leader, who would much later meet and greet Queen Elizabeth II, preparing a bomb to destroy part of the centre of his own city. The bomb car was driven to Shipkey Street. I saw people walking in from the other end of the block, and I was very worried about whether they're going to get injured or killed. But we were well back behind the IRA at the top of the block. Did you see the bomb go off? Yes, I did. It was a hell of an explosion. Tony Devine was there that day too. You know, they made phone calls, they phoned the newspapers, they phoned the radio stations, and there was a, a, a good amount of time allowed for uh, civilians to get out, of, get out of the way. There were people hurt and injured that day. 26 people, at least 26 people oh, were injured, oh. yeah. The unit didn't set out to do that. And uh, to this day, I can't understand why, because there was plenty of warning given. But still, people would get injured because that's the, that's the way of things with bombs. You can't well, control everything. Well, I mean, we know that. I know that. I, but all you can do is try and do your best. Do you understand that, you know, the bombing of a city, to know of it in advance and not to attempt to stop it or not to attempt to alert the police to it, that was a criminal offence. I didn't know that. You know, I couldn't possibly have alerted anybody without blowing the whole thing. And we were never given that much advanced knowledge of something. The bomb filmed by Boyer Bell was part of a two-day blitz across Northern Ireland 
which left eight people dead. Days later, the British Prime Minister, Edward Heath, shut down Northern Ireland's Parliament. The IRA had made clear to the Americans what they wanted from this film. They actually secured rights of control and censorship over the final cut. But there is another story sitting behind this film, and that's the exact role and knowledge of intelligence agencies. We've some compelling evidence that suggests British intelligence, but also possibly their American and Israeli counterparts knew of the film as it was being made. None admit involvement in its making. No one would have known now, you know, never in a million years, should they have been allowed to follow what they found. Come on, like a bunch of teenagers in a bog side, Mossad, the CIA, MI5, that's all James Bond kind of stuff. Dara McIntyre reporting there and there's much more in that programme in a detailed piece called The Secret Army on the BBC website today. The documentary itself is available to watch right now on the BBC iPlayer and it'll be shown on BBC Two tonight at 